Hi there. My name is Nadia Ward, and I'm going to be leading you in your yoga class today. Go ahead and come down into a child's pose with your feet together and your knees wide. Letting your belly move towards the mat with your arms lengthened out in front of you. And take a moment to center and to breathe slowly, allowing yourself to show up on your mat. Giving some appreciation to the mat for helping you create a space that allows you to become more present faster. And give your hips a little bit of a wiggle side to side, opening up the hip creases. And then find stillness and let the belly drop down a little deeper. And slow the breath a little more. Breathing in and out of the nose. Start to make your way up into all fours into a tabletop position. The knees right underneath the hips and the hands underneath the shoulders. Bring your fingers nice and wide. Press into the index finger, the thumb, the middle finger. Let the triceps wrap back so the inside of the elbows start to point forward. We're going to take a nice slow cat cow. Drop the belly down as you lift the tailbone up and lift the top of the head up. Pause here for a moment. Let the shoulders press back. And take a second to rock forward and back. Get in a little stretch in the belly. Coming back to neutral, press into the hands and allow the tailbone to start rolling down as the top of the head moves down, getting a nice large curve in the back. And then press into the hands so you can feel the shoulder blades separate even further, pulling the spine away from the ground as the head drops down. And now let's start to move one breath per movement, dropping the belly down, lifting the tailbone and the head on the inhale, shoulders pull back. And then exhaling, tailbone and head drop as the belly pulls up, separating the shoulder blades, getting that awesome stretch. Inhaling, dropping the belly, lifting up through the head and the tailbone. And exhaling, making the way into cat pose. And take a couple rounds on your own, breathing slowly, connecting the breath with the body movements. And then come back to neutral. Extend the right leg back and move it over the left foot and place it down on the mat. And then look back at the foot. Moving the left shoulder over towards the left hip, glancing a little bit deeper, getting a nice stretch on the right side body. Slowing the breath. The shoulder presses a little bit further back towards the hip, even a larger stretch on the right side body. Moving the way back towards neutral, bringing the leg back and the knee down. Extending the left leg back and crossing it over the right side and put it on the ground, glancing over at the left foot. The right shoulder moves back towards the right hip, creating a nice long curve in the left side body. The right shoulder moves back a little bit deeper. Keep glancing at the back foot. One more inhale and bring the foot back and drop the knee next to the right knee. Walk the hands a couple inches forward. You're going to tuck the toes under, lift the legs up and move into down dog. Take a moment to move and wiggle it out, bending the right knee and pressing the left heel down. Slowly switching sides. Just check in with the body. You can sway the hips side to side if you'd like. Whatever movements you enjoy. A little exploration of the body. And then find some stillness. 
coming up onto the tippy toes, take little itty bitty steps all the way up to the hands into a rag doll, bending the knees, letting the torso rest on the thighs, grabbing the elbows, let the head get heavy. The weight can currently be in the heels. Letting the torso rest on the thighs gives the spine permission to elongate and separate. And as the elbows get heavy, it creates more space for the head to have room to move around, to relax, to lengthen, as if it's dangling from a string. If you'd like to sway side to side, you can do that now, releasing the mid back, or you can stay in stillness, letting the elbows get heavier and heavier, opening the spine more and more. Releasing the hands down, start to straighten out the legs as much as feels comfortable, and then start to shift the hips forward a little bit as the weight moves from the heels towards the balls of the feet. That should open up the hamstrings and then glance towards the knees opening up the low back. Bring a little bend into the knees and slowly roll vertebrae by vertebrae up into a standing position, taking your time, letting the shoulders and the head come up last. Let the palm shine forward. Relax the forehead and the brow and the jaw. If you'd like to create intention here, this is a beautiful spot to do it. If you would just like to keep continuing moving and staying present or not have an intention at all, that's also a perfectly good choice. As the shoulders continue to move down the back, inhale as you reach the arms up to the sky. And exhale, hinge forward to fold into a forward fold. Bring the fingers to the shins, inhale, halfway lift, lengthening through the spine, the tailbone is pulling back as the chest pulls forward in opposition. Release the hands towards the mat, step back into a plank. Take one inhale here. And as you exhale, chaturanga, the shoulders start to move forward as the elbows bend and hug back towards the ribs. Inhaling into upward facing dog, lifting up the chest, letting the shoulder heads pull back. The tops of the feet are in the ground. And exhale into downward dog. Bring a little bend into the knees so you can pull the hips back in your down dog. And keeping the spine as long as you can, start to press the heels back down and straighten out the legs, keeping the hips back. Press into the index finger and the thumb and the space in between to make sure the weight isn't going to the pinky side of the hand and bringing stress into the wrist. Inhale, bending the knees, a look forward. Exhale, step, hop, or jump up to the top of the mat. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, fold into yourself. Let the hips glide forward. Get that hamstring stretch. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to standing, reaching for the sky. And exhaling, bringing the hands into a prayer to the heart. Inhale, reaching up to the sky. One breath per movement. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here, option to exhale with an open mouth, inhaling into the nose. Open the mouth for a big exhale. Two more. Open the mouth for your exhale. And last one. Bend the knees to look forward. Step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Arms reach up to the sky. And exhale, the hands to the heart. Inhale, reaching up to the sky. Exhale, hinge forward to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, move through your vinyasa. Chaturanga, up dog, down dog or straight to down dog, whatever your vinyasa is today. 
pausing in down dog for a few breaths. Bend the knees to look forward, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up to standing and exhale the hands to the heart. And the next inhale, you're gonna sit back into a chair pose. Let the weight move back into the heels and the hips move back and down. The arms can reach up to the sky or if that doesn't feel right, they can be at your heart. Let the inner thighs roll towards each other and down, feeling how that protects the knees and keeps them over the ankles. One more inhale and exhale into a forward fold. Let the hips glide forward. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale, take your vinyasa. Let the right leg lift and pull back. Press the left heel down and move the weight towards the big toe mound of the left foot, checking in to see if you swayed over to the left and try to come back to the center. Let the left thigh press back towards the left hamstring as the right heel pulls even farther back. The exhale brings the knee to the nose as the shoulders shift over the wrist, step the foot between the hands, and inhale up into warrior one. The back heel pivots down at a 45 degree angle, and then you press to the pinky and the heel. That whole side of the left foot seals down into the mat, inhaling, reaching up to the sky. Let the shoulders relax down. Open the forehead and the brow, relax the jaw. One more inhale. Exhale, release the hands to the ground, step it back towards a plank, take your vinyasa. Now extend the left leg back, press the right heel down, press the right thigh back towards the hamstring and the left thigh Left heel launches back. Take a big breath. Feel the back of the hamstring. Shift the weight forward. The knee moves towards the nose. The foot steps between the hands. Your inhale lifts you up to warrior one. Let the left hip hug back and in as the right hip moves gently forward. One more inhale. The next exhale releases the hand back as you step back into a vinyasa or straight to down dog. Bend the knees to look forward. Step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhaling, halfway lift straight in the spine. And forward fold, hips glide forward. Weight moves towards the balls of the feet, glancing towards the knees chair on the inhale and exhale lifting up bringing the hands to the heart one more round one breath per movement inhale chair exhale fold inhale halfway lift exhale chaturanga inhale upward facing dog exhale downward facing dog Right leg extends back. Step it between the hands. Inhale lifts you up into warrior one and the exhale releases you back down into your vinyasa. Option to leave the right leg up through your chaturanga for extra strengthening. Step the foot between the hands. The inhale lifts you and the exhale releases your hands back down, vinyasa. Meeting back in down dog. Taking a few breaths, pressing the heels down. It's okay to have a little bend in the knees. You're trying to pull the hips away from the thumbs. Let the shoulders move towards the hips. Bring the ears in line with the biceps and let the top of the head pull towards the thumbs. 
Beautiful, nice, long spine. Bend the knees to look forward. Step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hips glide forward. Soak it in. Glance towards the knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale into chair pose. And exhale up to standing. Inhale, reaching to the sky. Exhale, folding towards the ground. Halfway lift, and you know what's coming. Take a vinyasa, or go straight to down dog when you need it. Lift the right leg up and back. Step the foot between the hands. Inhale, up into warrior one. Neutralizing the hips as much as they can so the left hip is going to creep forward as the right hip hugs in towards the center of the mat. And release the hands behind the back, interlacing the fingers. And let the fingers move down the back towards the ground as the chest pulls up towards the sky. Let the shoulder blades pull back towards each other as the shoulders relax down. Glance up and lift through the chest to get a little upper back bend. Moving to humble warrior, exhale, let the head move to the inside of the right knee. The hands can stay at the small of the back or they can start to move overhead. Relax your jaw. Glance towards the back knee, let the head be heavy. Now you're gonna extend into that halfway lift. So keeping the hands interlaced behind the back. Inhale, as you halfway lift, pivot the back heel off the mat so all toes are starting to face forward into a lunge position, but you have a nice straight spine. Release the left hand down towards the mat on the inside of the right foot and extend the right arm up towards the sky. If this is too much right now or you need a break, it's okay to bring the left knee back towards the mat. Otherwise, press down into the left hand to reach up with the right hand. Pull the belly in towards the spine and lengthen the chest away from the back heel, allowing some space to let the right inner thigh hug in towards the belly. and then release the right hand down towards the mat. Step back into a plank pose and pause. Plank is fun, so take a deep breath, relax the jaw. You're gonna shift the heels over towards the right, pressing into the right hand and left the left arm, reach up to the sky, right side plank. Lengthen out the right side body, trying to keep the right shoulder over the right wrist. And then you're going to release the left forearm all the way down to the mat. So it's like you're coming into forearm plank on the left side into a side plank on the left. So the left forearm comes down, you start to shift the heels over to the left and reach the right arm up to the sky. Press into the left forearm to lift out of the shoulder. Slow the breath. You're doing great. And I love you. And we're going to be moving into a full forearm plank. So release the top hand down into a forearm plank. The heels pivot up. Let the heels pull back as the chest pulls forward. Try to keep the hips in a straight line from the heels all the way through the spine up the back of the neck. And then release the knees down, coming into a child's pose. The knees nice and wide, release the hips back, child's pose.
Now it would be rude of me if we didn't do the other side. So make your way back into down dog. And extend the left leg up and back. Shifting the shoulders forward over the wrist, step the left foot between the hands and inhale up into warrior one. Not staying here too long, but I do want you to seal the right pinky toe to heel all the way into the mat. The left hip hugs in a little bit as the right hip rolls forward and then release the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers and then switch the way they're interlaced. So switch which pinkies in the back and which thumbs in the front. And let the hands pull down towards the mat, lifting up through the chest. Let the shoulder blades pull back. Let the shoulders move down. Slow the breath. Moving into humble warrior, let the head move down to the inside of the left knee. The hands can stay by the back or move overhead. It doesn't have to be the same as the other side. Go ahead and play. Glancing towards the back foot. Let the left hip hug in a little bit. Awesome. Relax the forehead and the brow. Now bring the hands back to the low back, keeping them interlaced. You're going to inhale and halfway lift into a straight spine and pivot the back heel off the floor so all the toes are facing forward in the low lunge shape that we did earlier. And now bring the right hand down to the inside of the left foot and lift up with the left hand into a twist. Let the belly pull towards the spine as the chest lengthens forward. The left inner thigh hugs towards the belly. And now release the top hand down and step back into a plank pose. This is a great place to smile because you know what's coming up. Release the heels over towards the left, reaching up with the right hand, side plank on the left. Pressing into the bottom hand to lift out of the left shoulder. And we're going to be coming into a side forearm plank on the right. So as you shift the heels back towards the center, release the right forearm down to the mat with the fingers still facing towards the top of the mat, letting the heels drop to the right and lifting the left arm up to the sky. Press into the forearm, lifting up. Notice if the top hip is falling back and try to bring it forward a little bit to stack the hips on top of each other. Come back into a forearm plank, lifting the heels up, both forearms on the ground. Go ahead, release the knees down, bring them nice and wide, child's pose. Okay, breaks over. Coming back into all fours, tucking the toes under, downward facing dog. Inhaling as the right leg lifts and pulls back. And exhale the knee to the nose. Then step the foot between the hands and inhale up into crescent pose, leaving the back heel off the ground and the back toes facing forward. Bring a little bend into the back knee for me so you can let the right hip pull back and hug in as the left hip rolls forward. And then press the pubic bone forward so the tailbone can start to point down and you should get an opening in the left hip flexor. You can also notice as you press the pubic bone forward, the low back opens up. Then you can play with the straightness of the back leg trying to keep the hips neutral and that openness in the low back. Now release the hands behind the back just like we did in warrior one and interlace the fingers. And then you're gonna move the torso forward at about a 45 degree angle, letting the fingers pull back as the head extends forward and start to sway forward and back, pressing into the front foot Moving forward and back, 
letting the belly absorb towards the spine to keep a strong core. Now shift the weight forward and pause. Press really hard into the right foot, the big toe mound and the heel, and press into the foot, keeping the hands interlaced behind the back. You're going to lift up into warrior three, letting the back foot lift up on the, off the ground, coming into an awesome T shape. Let the left hip drop down a little bit as the right hip lifts up. Keep a soft bend in the right knee. Now slowly undo the hands and let the right hand come to the small of the back as you release the left hand down towards the mat and do a twisted half moon. Try to let the left heel lift as the left hip drops down a little. And then you can stay with the hand at the small of the back or you can lift the right arm up to the sky. Letting the chest pull forward away from the extended leg which is pressing back. Release the top hand down towards the ground, standing splits. Standing splits, we're trying to keep the hips neutral. So notice if you lift at the left hip up and try to drop it down so it stays in line with the right hip. So it's like the left hip is dropping and the right hip is lifting. Relaxing the jaw, slowing the breath. It's not about how high the hip gets. It's not about how high the foot gets. It's about keeping the hips neutral. If you want a little bit more, you can walk the fingers back in line with the toes and bend the elbows out towards the sides. And we're gonna be moving into lizard. So step the left foot all the way back into a very low lunge and then walk the right foot out to the right so you can bring the right hand to the inside of the right foot. And pause here for a moment. I want you to keep the left leg off the ground, so don't put the knee down yet. And then start to rock forward and back. Release the back knee down and untuck the toes. And then scooch the back knee back a scooch or two. And then come down onto the forearms. Unless you can't, then you stay up on your hands. When I stay up on my hands, I actually bring my fists onto the mat and my fists right underneath the shoulders. That way you put a little bit less stress on the wrists, but whatever works for you. And whatever you choose, I want you to slow the breath down. Relax the jaw. Let yourself melt, let the hips get heavy. If you're not already up on the hands, come onto the palms of the hands. Back toes are tucked under. You can either step into down dog or you can take a vinyasa by stepping the right foot back to meet the left, moving through your chaturanga up dog, down dog, or we'll just meet in down dog. Let the left leg lift up and back. Step it between the hands, inhaling up into crescent. Bending the back knee a little bit so you can neutralize the hips. Let the upper hip points roll up towards the ribs as the tailbone lengthens down. Try to bring the biceps in line with the ears and let the shoulders relax. And let the jaw relax with the shoulders. Release the hands behind the back and interlace the fingers. And that's right, switch the way they're interlaced. Shift the torso forward about a 45 degree angle. Pull the belly off the thigh as you lengthen the chest forward and press the right heel back. And start to rock forward and back, pressing into the front foot 
rocking forward and back, coming up towards the back big toe and then pressing the heel back. And then come forward into the rock forward position. Press down into the left foot, the big toe mound and the heel. Press nice and hard. And as you do so, you can lift the right leg up into warrior three. Your hands are still interlaced behind the back. Bring a little soft bend into the left knee. Letting the right hip drop a little. And even though the right hip is drop, dropping, try to lift the back heel up. The belly hugs in towards the spine and the front of the chest lifts up and forward. Yes, awesome. Oh, I see you. It's awesome. And now slowly undo the fingers, keeping the left hand by the small of the back as the right hand moves down towards the mat. The fingertips or the hand or on a block or you can let them float and then you have the option of opening up the left arm up towards the sky the head and heel are still pulling in opposition finding your balance and your strength great work go ahead and release the left hand down towards the mat walking them back closer to the foot keeping the hips neutral you can sway forward and back a little bit to find where the stretch is best for you on the left foot and if you want more of the fingers the elbows pull to the sides as the fingers become in line with the foot we're moving into lizard so step the right foot all the way back into a low lunge. Move the left foot out towards the left as both hands come to the inside of the left foot. Keeping the back leg straight for a moment as if the back of the knee is lifting up towards the sky. But the hips can still sink down a little and start to sway forward and back. And now come towards neutral, drop the back knee down, untuck the back toes and scooch the knee back a scooch or two. Coming into your version of lizard up high, down low, too slow. <laughs> Let the hips give in to gravity. You don't have to do all the work. Slow the breath in and out of the nose. And if you're still on your forearms, come back up onto the hands. Tuck the back toes under, lift the knee. Step the left foot back to meet the right. Optional vinyasa or straight to down dog. Bring the knees down, child's pose. Bring the knees nice and wide, toes together. Let the belly drop down. Slow the breath. Walk the hands over towards the right and bring the left hand on top of the right hand. Let the left hip hug back and in and the left armpit drop down. Walking the hands in the other directions, back through the center, all the way over to the left. The right hand comes on top of the left hand. The right hip hugs back. The right armpit drops down. Bring the hands back towards the center. And then walk them back towards the knees, lifting up, coming over into a seated position. Moving towards butterfly, bring the bottoms of the feet together as the knees move out to the sides. Bring the fingers, hands to the ankles. And bring the forearms in line with the calves. And start to lean forward. And you can let the head melt down 
as the forearms press into the legs to open the knees a little bit deeper, opening the hips, and the head can get heavy, opening the back. If you're not in love with this position, you can walk the hands forward. Be in love with this position. And now walking the hands back, we're going to take fire log. Some call it double pigeon. Some call it double pigeon. Some call it yeehaw. <laughs> so you're going to bring the right heel over the left thigh. And you're going to bring the left knee underneath the right knee. So it's like you're in a crisscross applesauce position, but the right leg is stacked up on top of the left. If this is completely undoable and uncomfortable for you, you can take a lying down figure four stretch where you come onto the back, your right ankles on top of the left thigh, and you're going to thread the hands around the left thigh and pull the thigh towards you as the right knee moves away from you. So that's option two. So if you're in fire log, I want you to grab the right butt cheek and pull it out to the side and then place the sit bone back down onto the mat. Lifting up through the chest. If you want to get deeper, you can move the left ankle forward so it's underneath the right knee. Try to relax the inner thighs, slow the breath. And if this isn't enough for you either, you can walk the hands forward. But they are all awesome options. Just do you. Please don't do me. <laughs> and if your hands are moved forward, walk it back. And if you're lying on the ground, you can just stay lying there and release the legs for a moment. And if you walked it back, open up the legs nice and wide into a wide-legged fold. So bringing the feet wide, legs straight. Flex the feet so the toes are pointing up towards the sky. And then let the pinky toes pull back and walk the hands forward. Getting into the inner thighs. and then walking them back up. We're gonna take yee-haw on the other side. So if you're lying down, just move the left ankle over the right thigh, grab onto the right thigh, and pull it towards you as the left knee presses away. But if you're coming into fire log with me, you're going to stack the left ankle over the right thigh, pull the left glute out of the way, and then release the sit bone down. Try to relax the inner thighs and lift up through the chest. Relax the forehead and the brow and the jaw and breathe nice and slow. If you need more, rock the right foot forward so it comes underneath the left knee. And if you want more, you can walk the hands forward and melt it down. Slow the breath. Stay present on your mat. And if your arms are extended in front of you, walk them back. And then straighten the legs out in front of you for a forward fold. Inhale, reach up to the sky. And exhale, take a fold. Reaching towards the legs or the shins, whatever feels right. And if you're on your back, we're going to be coming onto our back for a moment. So if you just want to stay there, that's fine with me. Whatever you want to do. And let's come onto our back. So slowly roll all the way down. Walk the feet towards the 
butt as the knees are facing to the sky. You're just gonna press into the feet so you can lift the hips up a little bit and press them over to the right side of the mat and then drop them down. Extend the left leg away from you. Hug the right, so it's on the ground. Hug the right knee into the chest and you're gonna take a twist. You're gonna take the right knee all the way over to the floor on the left side. Extend the right arm out to the side and glance over the right shoulder towards the right hand. Slowly breathe. Notice if you're clenching either of the glutes and try to relax them. And tell all the muscles in the spine to relax as well. Bring the knee back to the center. Put the foot back on the ground. Walk the left foot up to meet it. Lift the hips up and move them over towards the left side of the mat. Extend the right leg away from you. Hug the left knee into the chest. Move it over to the right side of the body down to the mat or the floor. Extend the left arm out towards the left and glance over the left shoulder. Relax the hips and the inner thighs and the glutes. Relax the low back and surrender and release. Come back towards the middle. Release the foot down, walk the right foot to meet the left, neutralizing the hips. We're going to take a happy baby, so bring the knees towards the armpits as the soles of the feet face up to the sky. Take the arms on the inside of the knees, but the hands are going to reach towards the outside of the feet, the pinky toe side of the foot. And let the shoulders press down and let the tailbone press away from you as the low back moves down towards the mat. The knees are at a 90 degree angle. And you can sway a little bit. Some people like to sway. Some people like to stay still. Bring the knees together. Hug your shins and your legs towards you. Bring the head up to the knees. Give yourself a big squeeze. Squeeze the feet. Squeeze the face. Squeeze the hands. Squeeze the belly. Squeeze everything. And exhale, release into Shavasana. Give some space between the inner thighs. Let the feet flop out to the sides. Give some space between the arms and the torso and let the palms face up. For just a moment, lift up through the chest a little bit so the shoulder blades can move down towards the hips and then release back down. And take a moment to restore and rest. Let the back of the head get heavy. And then let the shoulders get heavy, allowing the neck to release. Let the ribs sink down. Let the hips rest, letting the low back release. Letting the calves and the thighs and the heels let go. The back of the arms and the back of the palms settle in. Feel free to stay here as long as you would like. You're an amazing, beautiful human. Namaste.